Now, since we're attacking something trigonal planar, there's a possibility of two different products. Because instead of attacking from above, the osmium tetroxide could have attacked from below. the osmium tetroxide had attacked from below, this would have been our product. So when you start out with an alkene and end with two cis OHs on alkane, then you do, that's what you do. <laughs> that's good. Except we probably shouldn't say cis because cis refers to the position around a double bond, and there isn't any double bond here anymore if it came from a sin addition to the double bond. That's right. But you have to keep in mind that the OHs will not necessarily be pointing in the same direction. They're only pointing in the same direction immediately after the reaction, but if we started rotating around one of these bonds, they wouldn't be pointing in the same direction anymore. We saw last time, sometimes it's not that easy to tell whether something came from a sin or an anti-addition. Basically, you just have to do the experiment and see whether the sin or the anti-addition gives you the product. Just because two OHs came from a sin doesn't mean they'll be pointing in the same direction in the product because they could have started rotating around the single bond. So it's actually not that easy to see if it came from a sin or an anti. The way you summarized this was well put. You said that if you have two sin alcohols, two alcohols that seem like they came from a sin attack and an alkene, it seems like we did this osmium tetroxide reaction. But remember that we didn't necessarily have to start with an alkene. We could have started with something that we made into an alkene. And that's what you'd be more likely to do on a synthesis. We have to decide if these are the same or different. Don't ask me. Um, <laughs> different. Yeah. We have to ask, is there any way we could flip or rotate one of these so it would look identical to the other picture? No. Yes, if we flipped it. If you yes. it up. If you literally, well, can't you just if it was a pen R like this, this, if it was a pen like this. If you want, you could do that. That's right. Okay. <laughs> It goes like this, and then you went like this. On the bottom same. one, the right one is R. Mm -hmm. And the left one is S. And on the top one, it's... The right one is S, and the left one is R. Yeah. But you don't want to conclude from these that these are so an antimers. you're saying you just flipped it? Um, you don't want to conclude these are an antimers. They could be the same meso compound. <laughs> Is this compound meso? Yeah, that's yeah. meso. Yes, this is meso. So in fact, these are the same. This carbon is the same as this carbon, and this S is the same as this S over here. We saw an example a little bit like this. This is the downside of assigning the R and the S. The R and the S could be the same, but they could be in a different order. After all, if I took this and I rotated this 180 degrees, if we just rotate this 180 degrees, this carbon will be on the left, and this carbon will be on the right. So if the R's, if both of them have R's on the left side, and they have, both of them have S's on the right side, then they're different. But if they're opposite, then they're the same? Because you can flip it around and then it'll be different. Well, no, if, if they had both, if the S's and the R's had been in the same places, they would be so the same as Arnest well. So doesn't tell you anything. In this case. <laughs> the R&S can tell you something, but it's tricky. There's no simple approach here. The R&S could tell us something. Again, so if two things have, so what you're noticing here is that you have opposite configuration at both stereo centers. Uh -huh. That could either mean they're enantiomers, or they could mean they're the same meso compound. So the, if you want to use the RNS approach, it's not enough to see that there's opposite configuration at every stereocenter. Then you have to check whether they're the same meso compound. Now, can everyone see that this is meso? Yes. Because it has this plane of symmetry. So these, there's, they can't be enantiomers, because meso compounds don't have enantiomers, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say that like the methyl on the right was propyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
company thinking about comparing these two compounds? So this is a whole new problem. Maybe we should finish with this problem before we go on to that one. So let's finish with this problem for a second, and then we can well, go we on to the new problem. Mesons, so they're the same. Let's take one problem at a time. So in this problem over here, how did we decide they were the same? One way we could do is by noticing that they have opposite configuration at both stereocenters, mm -hmm. but they're mesos, so they can't be enantiomers. For me, the easiest way to see that these are the same is you could simply rotate this 180 degrees like this. If you just rotate it like this, it lays on top, exactly on top of this Can compound over here. Like that, yeah, if you rotate it, it would look like this. It's already drawn. If we rotated this, so notice so yeah. what I'm thinking about is going like this. Simply, so it's just like my chalk holder is moving. Just rotating like um, that. Okay. So if you rotate it like this, wouldn't this hydroxy be in this position? Yes. Okay. And if you rotate it like this, wouldn't this methyl group be in this position? If we're rotating in the plane of the board, the methyl won't switch from a wedge to a dash. Oh, okay. So the methyl group would still be here. There's many different rotations and flips that we can make. If you, kind of, if you rotate around a vertical line, then all the wedges turn into dashes, and all the dashes turn into wedges. Or if you rotate around a horizontal line, all the wedges turn into dashes, and all the dashes turn into wedges. But if you simply rotate in the plane of the page, you simply, the left-hand side moves to the right, and the right-hand side moves to the left, but the wedges and the dashes keep the same positions so that they to, had before. So like, doing that is the same thing as flipping it horizontally and vertically? Is it? Let's see. Yeah. I'm not sure. That's a little too hard for me. I, can't I suppose it must be. Rotating. Yeah, because you're flipping it like this and then like this. I like suppose that's true. Pancake. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, you're flipping the pancake first, so maybe this face down, now the pancake this face. Yeah, but you're flipping it two ways this time. Yeah. Not one way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like one of those waffle makers where you like clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you flip it back. <laughs> <laughs> Basically what we're doing is we're simply taking something that looks like this and rotating it like this. Okay, so these so are it looks the like this. So these are the same. And again, there's two ways to see that. The simplest for me is to see that if you rotate this in the plane of the board, this picture will be identical to this picture. And again, if that's difficult for you, the only way to get better at that is practice and building models. If you build models of different pictures and see whether they're the same or not, you can get better at that approach. The other approach is to assign RS, but the big thing we saw here is if you have the opposite configuration at both stereocenters, that could mean these are enantiomers, or it could mean they're the same meso compound. Opposite configuration at both stereocenters could be either enantiomers or the same meso compound. And here it's clear that these are meso, so they're the same compound because they don't have enantiomers. And now we can take a look at this other example that was proposed. Are these the same or different? Let's use the two methods. The method that I like is rotating in the plane of the page, simply rotating like the chalk. Well, if I simply took this molecule and rotated it, if you did it that way, the purple would be on yeah. the other side. That's right. If we simply rotated it around like this, yeah. now the purple would be on the left. That wasn't an issue here because this was symmetric. There was hydroxies on both sides. There were hydroxies on both sides. If I replaced this with the purple too, things would be different. Duh, it's a mirror. On the other hand, you, so if we rotate it, these clearly would not be the same picture anymore because this picture has the propyl on the right, and if you rotated this, the propyl would be on the left. The other approach would be to assign R and S. Well, here again, we have opposite configuration at all the stereocenters. That means either these are enantiomers or they're the same meso compound. But we know clearly these are not meso because there's no plane of symmetry. Why, is, why can't there be a plane of symmetry? Because the propyl on the right would be looking at the methyl on the left. Going back to our examples here. So what did we decide about these? Were these the same or different? Same. The same. So we would end up erasing one of these two pictures. It's possible that this dihydroxylation could give you two different products, but that's not what happened in this case. In this case, it only just gave us one syn product. So we'll go ahead and erase this example here. On the other hand, if we had done a syn dihydroxylation with a propyl on one end and a methyl on the other, then we would get the two different products if they had started out cis to each other.